welcome everyone to our second last session for Aussie Live 2016. How exciting! We had such a busy day yesterday. So many presenters, so many sessions, and so many new ideas. My head was full. I was not able to sleep at all very well. So many ideas racing through my head. I'm very pleased to have with me today for our second last presentation, Lisa Delaporte from Know My World. And I'll just go back a couple of slides, if you don't mind, Lisa, just sure. to uh, <laughs> say thank you to our <laughs> sponsors and supporters and, and to our partner, who you'll notice we have listed here on this slide, our Know My World partner. Um, awesome to have you with us today, Lisa. I remember at the end of the session today that you'll be asked to do a little feedback form for the learning revolution. And of course we have all of our sponsors still supporting us and you see them listed on our slide. Let's see where we are in the world today. I like to see the smiley faces. So grab one of those and pin it on your map. I can see Phoenix, Arizona, and I can see Victoria, Australia, and Queensland, Australia. Um, or is that New York? I'm New not York. really sure. <laughs> New York. <laughs> Phoenix, and Peggy yeah. is Phoenix is probably down there ish. Uh huh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, tools are active. Yes, they are. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. All right, we have um, some shining lights there and we are spanning the globe. Look at that. Thank you everyone for sharing that information. So it's my very great delight to welcome to the lectern Lisa Delaporte. We're really excited. We want to know how do we have students as agents of peace? So Lisa, take it away. Sure, got it. Uh, thank you so much, Carol, uh, for the warm welcome as usual. Uh, yes, so today we're going to be talking about students as agents of peace and uh, engaging in a little bit of conversation about what that means to us as educators. And something that we will be sharing is one of the ways that we do this at Nomad World. So, uh, short introduction. Uh, my name is Lisa Delacourt, and I am the Program Operations Manager at Nomad World. So, I really manage the background, the databases, the policies and procedures. I support all of um, the different uh, educational coordinators who, who manage the exchanges when teachers connect. So I make sure that people are supported when they're out there working with teachers, working with students. Um, an interesting fact about me, I was at the Black Forest Islands for a semester and implemented some of our projects and programs there and uh, facilitated an exchange between a classroom on the island and a classroom in the U.S. And in my spare time, I teach yoga. Um, so Alicia Resigno, unfortunately, could not be here with us this evening. She uh, is, is very ill right now. Uh, she is our educational coordination manager, the IT specialist. Um, and the project we're going to talk about is actually through one of her homeschoolers. So um, she got to implement this firsthand. So it is really, you know, uh, Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. She doesn't really have a voice. Right okay, now. hello. Um, hello. I'm sorry oh, to put like in like that, but I'm sorry. Put in here <laughs> earlier. <laughs> and uh, and Sarish was the educational coordinator uh, for this exchange. So Sarish, if you would introduce yourself, please. Sarish. Yeah, go ahead, Sarish. Just click on your talk button again. You're on your mobile phone, so it'll be your little icon with the microphone in it. Uh, can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, yeah. we can. Go ahead. Yay, finally. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm so sorry for that. Um, I don't know what happened. It was working earlier on my computer, but then I had no choice but to uh, uh, get on my iPhone. Um, my name is Sarish, and I'm an educational coordinator for Know My World. I've been uh, working with them for almost two years now. It'll be two years in March. And um, I'm located in Delaware in USA, about like two hours away from New York City, or down south. Um, I run my own business, and it says World Travel Traveler. I love to travel. I've been to a lot of places, and uh, I hope to do that in the near future as well. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so a little bit about Know My World. We focus in uh, three specific areas of social and emotional learning, intercultural communication, and cultural competency. So all of the areas in which we focus, focus on these three aspects of learning. And it's all uh, in ways to contribute powerfully to the global workforce, create global conversations, and really have uh, positive social impact. So the three ways that we do this is through teacher training. Uh, we have professional development workshops uh, that we have with the Police and Know My World. We have projects and programs, which uh, is really what we're going to focus on today, uh, one of our projects. And we have digital exchanges, which we talk about quite a lot, where we use these three aspects, the social and emotional learning, the intercultural communication, and the cultural competency, and we coach teachers to incorporate um, projects right into their academic content. But today we are going to focus on a very specific project. And, and okay, oh, just to take it, so this is, this is the model we use for uh, the projects that we do when we're creating with teachers. So whatever it is that we're developing, uh, even inside of the project that we'll be talking about today, we're looking at all these different aspects of learning. So social, emotional, cultural, and academic learning outcomes are all incorporated into the things that we do. So to move right into the conversation, what does it mean to be an agent of peace? And so I'm just curious sort of uh, what the audience has in mind when, when they think of agent of peace, but was it that drew you to this? What is it that you think of? So um, if you're interested in hopping on the microphone or just typing something into uh, the chat box. Well, I guess to start off, um, I could say, um, oh, there you go. Coach, Coach Carol just said a person who meditates. Mediates. Mediates. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I guess um, for me, when I think of an agent of peace, somebody who um, is genuinely uh, good to everything that this world has, somebody who, yeah, I like that answer to a person who looks for solutions. That that was the next thing I was going to say. So for me, that would be an agent of peace. Anybody else? Thank you, George, had a, had a good answer. A person who advocates for peace and models models actions that support peace for all. I think that's an important aspect. Someone who models the actions, not just it's, it's basically the the walking the walk, you know, after the talk. Mhm. Mm and I see Alicia has joined us. I I'm wondering if your voice is up to speaking to us today, Alicia. She might just use the chat box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't feel like she was there. Place up there on the lectern with you guys anyway. <laughs> no, yeah. no voice, yeah. but she's supporting. Excellent. Good <laughs> to see you. I hope you're feeling better. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think the key term here that I'm seeing from a lot of people is action. Um, yeah. Yeah, action is a very big piece, you know, and even 
you know, where it starts really is, you know, with the conversation, uh, just mm-hmm. talking about things. So uh, on that note, Sarah, would you like to take over and chat a little bit about um, sure. Journal Swap for Peace, which is uh, the project that was used in the exchange uh, for students of age and peace. And you know, as I said, Sarish was the educational coordinator that connected these two schools or these two students. Okay. Right? Well, um, let me let me have Sarish explain that to you. Okay. <laughs> so um, we did journal swap for peace. It was a very short project. It was only two weeks long. We we got the best out of it, though. I feel like in short in, in that short period of time, we were able to accomplish a lot and understand how children think about when you ask them what what peace is. So with um, with the uh, the journal swap, our purpose is to create a their awareness, uh, empathy among peers, communication and literacy, uh, as you can see right there, self aware awareness and organizational writing skills. So with this particular one, uh, they the two parties they did write back and forth to each other, but they took very imaginative and different approaches in communicating their ideas. Um, uh, would you move on to the next slide so I can start from there? I don't know if I can move on uh, from my iPhone. Sure, yeah, you have access. But just uh, a question about journal swap. You've done journal swap before, right? Yes, I've done it once before with, um, uh, it was between actually two, uh, three different uh, groups of people, or three different, uh, and then three different parts of, of the world, three different countries. It was Taiwan, Australia, and here in America. Uh, so what we do is we pair up the kids according to, uh, and if somebody has special needs, we do our best to pair them up um, with uh, somebody who's able to take them on and um, uh, every week there are essential questions that they have to answer and they swap usually at the end but with our particular journal swap they swapped almost every two to three days and like I said it was a very short uh, journal uh, it was a very short exchange so got it so any yeah yeah so I, I'm asking questions sorry sorry <laughs> So on the on the slide here, it's a journal for seven days, and, and you called it a short exchange. So, how long does journal stuff normally last? Uh, the one that we did, it lasted, like I said, for two weeks. Um, Alicia and I had come up with a sort of a um, lesson plan, uh, where we had for each week, we split each week up in two to three, uh, in two. Uh, in two days, or like um, like Monday to Wednesday, we have we had um, uh, the the students introduce each other uh, to themselves, and then um, the second half we started talking about the uh, the main uh, main topic of this particular scene, which was peace. Uh, we so we wanted to kind of have a smooth transition, and then the two groups that were participating were completely different from each other, and so we thought, what better way to introduce that than to do it through their own cultures? Um, Got it. Okay. Mhm. So, uh, and then no. uh, the type of I'm sorry, you have a question? No, I just uh, if you, have you found the the access to the slides yet, or do you just want me to move them as you request? Um, we can move forward because uh, part of that, like, uh, yeah. So um, the participants were located right here in the USA, which made it easier for us to kind of get in touch with them. Usually, when I was uh, when I did the journal swap before, I, I had to wake up at crazy hours to like get in touch with them. <laughs> But we were on the same uh, we were in the same time zone, so it worked out really well. Uh, one of the participants, uh, uh, they were they were located in New York, and Alicia knows them personally, while the other is here in Delaware, and I know them personally. They're both homeschool teachers, um, and they both um, um, and they have more than just two students. But we were only able to to kind of pair up. Uh, grade five and seven with grades four and five because they were the closest in the age group, uh, so that when they share their ideas, they're able to comprehend it. 
But um, I know from my side here in Delaware, um, her name is Aram. She helped uh, not not only does she help her own kids, but she takes on a group of other kids, um, other people's kids um, every Wednesday, where they kind of got together and brainstormed the ideas for the two weeks that we have this exchange form. So for the family from New York is a uh, Unitarian family, while the family here in Delaware, they they take on a very religious approach. Um, it's, uh, and it's not just that. She teaches them um, everything that you would normally get out of going to public school or private school, but she also adds Islamic studies to her um, uh, curriculum. Okay, we can go on to the next um, The next slide. It shows you a visual um, of uh, the students. Uh, I just took uh, the pictures that they posted, which they gave us permission <laughs> to kind of show you guys here. Um, the, the, we have two kids here, uh, the one in the glasses and uh, the other one in the red jacket. Those were from, the, uh, from Delaware, and you'll see the kids above. Um, those were from the kids from New York, and I just uh, kind of copied and pasted a little bit of their introduction in which they talked about the first week where they introduced each other, where we had uh, asked them who you are, where you're from, what are your interests and hobbies and talents, what makes you unique, and we gave them ideas on what type of things do you like, like foods do you like, and uh, we wanted to kind of have, like I said earlier, a smooth transition into the topic of peace. So we introduced, um, Alicia and I brainstormed over this for a while until we came up with something um, to kind of have that transition, uh, the question, what part of your culture do you find peaceful? What makes you feel at peace? And we gave specific examples because they are young kids. We wanted to kind of, um, we, wanted, we wanted them to be guided by their uh, teachers at home and also in any way we could help them, but to come up with an answer that they could, uh, Come to, but to have them come up with an answer on their own. So we said, like, maybe listening to music can help them find peace, playing a certain sport, celebrating a certain holiday. Uh, and I wanted to read, um, um, and the, the, the kids uh, from, uh, the Del from Delaware, they found, well, both of them answered that their, um, one of them answered, actually, snow, playing in the snow, helps them be peaceful, while the other answered in a very philosophical way, saying that uh, Islam teaches about peace, so his religion, when he practices it, makes him at peace. While from New York, um, so reading on the couch makes him feel peaceful. So you have, like, very innocent answers here. So I have a question for you. You, what do you uh, find peaceful? What makes what what part of your culture do you find peaceful? You can you guys can chat it or use your microphone to talk about talk about it. Working in my garden, reading. Anybody else? Yeah. Definitely. Yoga. Yoga for sure. For myself, I find uh, running to be, when, when I'm running, I'm away from, I, I just feel I'm away from all the craziness in the world and I find peace with that. Prayer being near water light. That's beautiful. <clears throat> Okay, um, and then uh, during that second half of the week, uh, from Thursday to Monday, uh, we taught we wanted them to create either a journal or a video to kind of discuss and reflect on peace. Uh, we we just uh, ha asked that question earlier on uh, what it means to be an agent of peace. But and uh, because they're kids, we wanted them 
to be, we wanted the question to relate to them. So we asked them what it means to be an agent of, of peace for a kid. So we gave them ideas. They could create a video or journal. If you go move on to the next slide, uh, you'll see that there is a video attached, and I wanted to share that with you. Uh, Lisa, do you mind hitting the play button? Should be able to play for everybody on here. I'm not sure where the play button is. Uh, so the best way of playing a video is to do a web tour of that video. So if we have a link to it, um, uh, okay. when, when you upload the slides to Blackboard Collaborate, you actually lose all your links. It's oh, not really? like a, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I can share the, the link with you one second. Oh, I thought that within the slide it would definitely work. Because I uploaded it, and uh, I had no idea. That's okay. okay. We can either do a web tour, or you can share it in the chat for people to have a look at. I can uh, share it in chat. Just one second. Let me just get the link. Um, I'm so sorry about that. I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> I thought that as That's part okay. of the presentation, it might work. Um, in this version of Blackboard Collaborate, it is a bit of a challenge, but I'm pretty certain their updated newer version they're working on, which is a web-based um, Blackboard Collaborate, you will be able to do that very easily. But in this version, it's not possible. Um, OK. Just one quick second. There we go. And um, but uh, their video was really um, insightful. Um, this is these are the kids from Delaware who uh, replied to those questions. So let me uh, just find that here. There we go. I wonder if you can, like, just hear it. Can you guys hear that? Yes, we can. It's a bit fuzzy, but we can hear. OK, this will, I think the audio is fine. We can spread awareness, we can give donations, we can be thankful for our 
blessing. Definitely, you are so right. I wrote some of my notes too. People should be more accepting of brother of uh, others, whether they are from a different religion, race, or country. We should learn to work together with our strengths and, more importantly, forgive each other. I absolutely agree. Wouldn't it be nice if people accepted the changes around them and did not bully that and did not bully other people? Yes. So I would say for me, living without fear of failing and even and even when life is tough, continue helping each other. So for me being a peaceful ten year old, I should not be threatened by the differences around me. <laughs> so what did you guys think of that? I, I know you couldn't see them. They looked very cute while doing that. Uh, but they had made some uh, very profound points in how they uh, perceived peace. Any other comments you guys have for them? So if you look at the slide, I know the slides are kind of uh, on the, uh, not in the center, which I don't know why it's doing that. But um, if you look in the, um, I guess you can't see, but there's a photo, um, there's a drawing of a um, peaceful garden that one uh, um, are in a book that this, uh, the sister of one of these kids uh, had drawn to represent her point of view uh, or, or how she perceives peace. And at the bottom, you'll see that these are all of the, yeah, I'm so sorry. I wish I could share that with you. Um, I can't believe the, the slides are cut off. And then if you look at the bottom, the light blue box. Um, well, actually, we provided them with essential questions, where, uh, but I, we had given a free, a free reign to the homeschool teachers to do as they like. And I said that to go as deep as you want or just to do what makes you feel comfortable. And it was, I wish the teacher could be here tonight, and I invited her. Um, she wanted so much to be here to talk about her experience, but uh, I have to give her credit for everything she's done with these kids. She's, uh, I met with her personally, and she told me that she she's the one who composed um, the questions for the interview, and she edited everything. She helped, uh, the, the, the those ideas are from those two kids, but she just uh, made it more eloquent. So that's why you see a lot, a lots of key vocabulary words. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, as I was saying earlier, if you look at the bottom um, of that video, um, right next to the piece, uh, piece dot 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 question mark, it, it has all of the um, main. Um, keywords that they talked about in the video, acceptance, truthfulness, happiness, religion. And not only did they discuss that um, Islam preaches that, but all religions essentially preach that. Uh, so what do you guys think of that? To have like, um, because I know nowadays we have a lot of, uh, 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 we, uh, we separate the state and church. But we're looking at a homeschool that uses their own um, that uses um, a, a relig that uses religion to teach about world. What are you, what 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 are your thoughts on that? Okay. Um, Very true. Definitely. I think there needs to be like a a class, a religious tolerance class 
um, here in America because there's not just there's an increase in this, uh, Islamophobia, but as well as other minor um, religions. Exactly, tolerance for everything. I agree, hundred percent. Well, something even further along with tolerance, because like tolerance is something that we just put up with and we just deal with. But more the first word that you have on the slide here, Serge, which is acceptance and understanding. Like even to a deeper level, right? Like that's that's the goal of having these deeper conversations. Is, you know, once yes. there is an understanding and awareness, it's not something you're dealing with, but it's something that you can accept, even if even if there is a disagreement. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely right. Culture. Excellent. Thank you for your uh, input. Um, now let's move on to the next slide. Uh, the next slide is about the, uh, the participants from New York. They also posted a small video of which I will play the audio for. So hopefully you'll be able to hear that as well. Let's see. Albums, videos. Sarah, did you put the link for the last video in the uh, chat box? Sarah? Uh, it looks like her, she's having some microphone problems. Um, so she's talking, we can't hear her. Or, yeah, there's also now, there's a, um, oh no, it stopped now. The little red on the microphone means that there's a bit of a problem there. The okay. audio is delayed. I'm sorry. So she might be having some connections. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you did. Hi, Sarah. Welcome back. Hello? <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can you hear me now. Oh, I was playing the video for you. I'm so sorry. I I was playing the video and I thought you guys were listening to that. My I had my phone turned away. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um I'm so sorry. I thought that you were listening to what the video uh, what they were doing. Okay. So I can't really play that video because it's only available through my phone, and if I try to access it using uh, the computer, it, uh, I, it requires for me to gain access. I wonder, Alicia, can you uh, can you play it from your computer? Oh yeah, yeah, and do a share screen. That could work. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. And is there a link to the first video as well, Sarah? Or I'm gonna look for that. I, I'm the, I'm multitasking so it's hard for me to <laughs> But I will definitely at the end of this I will uh I will share the link. Perfect. Okay, I found the video. I can play it. Okay. Alicia I got it. Despair and discrimination. Two boys wonder how they can be agents of. But stop when they hear a big crash. <laughs> the two boys rush outside. As they run, they see the basketball hoop has fallen over and has blocked the driveway. Oh no! What will we do? Dad won't be able to get to work if the basketball hoop is blocking the driveway. Maybe we can help. Yeah, let's 
Five minutes later. Probably the best level. How? Safe guys are trouble being like, hey, what does peace mean to you? To me, that everybody gets along. How about you? I think peace is of happiness and well-being. You know what? Anyone can be an agent of peace. Yeah, as long as they try hard. The end. A short video, but it did hit some uh, good points about peace. It's a state of being happy and well-being, and anybody can be an agent of peace. Do you agree, agree with that? Like, What do you think are the qualities of somebody who can be an agent of peace? Understanding, empathy, and definitely empathy. Yep, definitely. Okay, any questions regarding this slide? Definitely. Being prepared to work together, to share, to understand, and have empathy. Okay. Um, if there aren't any questions, let's move forward to the next slide. Thank you. In the next slide, um, in the next slide, we moved on into the next, the second uh, week of the questions, um, in which we wanted to kind of get a closure. Um, as we didn't have enough time, we we tried. Uh, to kind of squeeze in as many essential questions as we could possibly can, but obviously we wanted them to also get um, the experience that they wanted out of this. So in the third, I'm sorry, I just lost the document. I'm just opening that up. Go, where did it go? Hmm. There, there, there. <laughs> okay. In the second week, uh, we wanted them to answer what happens when there is peace or when there isn't peace. And we wanted to do both a micro level and macro level. Uh, in your home, community, or country, or in the world. Do you think that there is peace in the world today? And then uh, we we always requested each of the participants to comment on their partner's uh, jur sw journal every time they would swap. So I guess before we kind of move into what the kids say, uh, what do you think, like, do you think there is peace in the world? Let's let's start with that question. Um, they actually, they wanted, we actually had requested them that they communicate with each other using either Google Hangout or Skype, but they were unable to do so because of their scheduling. Uh, they only swapped through Google Plus, uh, where we had uh, created a community in which they could share videos, uh, written journals, uh, photos, whatever they liked, links, however they wanted to communicate. Uh, but with the journal swap, uh, 
writing is essential. So we said that even along with your videos, at least write something. And we had requested all of the kids, each participant, to kind of comment on how, um, however they wanted to comment, like how they feel about it. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and uh, with this uh, part of the journal swap, they mostly had um, um, uh, one of the, well, the, the participants here in Delaware, they created a small PowerPoint pre presentation. I will get to that, Peggy. <laughs> this is actually part of the the last bit of it. Is part of what I'm getting to. They created the PowerPoint presentations uh, above in the slide. You'll see that there are different um, pieces of the PowerPoint that I took out, which talks about their experiences along with what they think if there is whether they think there is peace in the world or not. If it if, if it is achievable or not, or how it is achievable. And I know personally from speaking to some of the kids here in Delaware, well, one of the kids here in Delaware and his siblings, um, they learned that even in the quotes you'll see that I learned that friendship is peace. Peace to me is the understanding of forgiveness and caring. And uh, what they got out of it was that that peace is that peace is possible. It's something that you have to work hard for. Um, I can share the link with you for the presentation, and they created a small uh, uh, video for that, which basically talks about what they talked about in the presentation. Okay. Who put the cookies in the jar? So, um, what happens in this book is it explains how cookies are made and the people who make them. So, in one short book and in a short sentence. Um, so basically it's a story about the hand that makes the cookies and what they make them and what This was a bit of uh, what they um, had shared with me uh, about the last bit of this uh, project. And uh, he said, the last bit he said was, that peace is a process, it, uh, meaning that it's not just handed to you. You have to work for it. What do you guys, uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Anyone else? Definitely, we we come back to the same point that action is the key. And how do we create those opportunities? Where can we create them? Sarah, is she still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I was just waiting to see if anybody else will comment. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm here. No, um, 
I agree with your response. We come back to the topic of religion again. I think, um, well, personally, I think that religion is one of the ways that you can create an opportunity for a kid to have uh, an idea about what peace is because it's it's your surroundings that create uh, how you view the world. Uh, but it also depends on who you're being taught from. Yep, definitely. Kind of like, yep, global co collaboration projects. Kind of like with this project that we did here where we brought two different groups of people, completely different groups of people came together and discussed uh, and talked about how what peace is and how they can um, create peace or if there is peace in the world. Uh, they were able to hit a lot of uh, the deeper points that we wanted them to. Uh, and. Uh, after I spoke with the teachers and I spoke with the students, they enjoyed it very much. They were they were so happy to have this opportunity because they were able to interact with a group of people where they could teach them or and learn from them. It wasn't just talking about peace. It was it was about interaction. It was about uh, making new friends as well. Any questions before I move on to the next slide? Okay, let's move on to the next slide. How do you create students as agents of peace? I think we just kind of talked about that, that we have to create opportunities uh, to understand what peace is. Uh, and that can be done through schools, um, in your classes, Global collaboration projects, and know what are the um, things that we can, and what are the ways we can uh, uh, create students as agents of peace. Any other ideas? Definitely. So I have a question for you um, and discuss news events. I agree with that. I think all topics in the world uh, is a way into creating an opportunity for them to learn more about peace and to become an agent of peace. Literature, music, um, like earlier, uh, I believe Peggy, you had said um, geography, or I'm sorry, Ness, geography, history, social studies, all topics. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay, let's move on to the next slide. And uh, all of you here are also invited to sign up for the Journal Swap for Peace. Um, it's a great way, like you said, uh, to create, uh, to have these exchanges with somebody across the world from a completely different culture or religion, it creates that acceptance that we talked about. To, uh, if you know more about it, then you're able to understand it more. Thus, creating this, uh, okay, I understand you more, so, and uh, create and building relationships and friendships. So it's a great way to. Create that gateway towards being having become your kids become an agent of peace.
And so mm-hmm. they can, I, I switched the slides, so they can sign up, anybody can sign up for General Swap Keith um, by emailing uh, request to info at knowmyworld.org. Here's our contact and social media information. You can like us on Facebook, find us on Twitter. And I also like to thank you all for listening to my stutter. I just got really nervous when uh, the YouTube videos weren't working. So I apologize for that. And thank you so much for having patience with me. This was my first time. I came in with confidence, and then I lost a little bit of it, but you guys are awesome. <laughs> you kept me going. Thank you. <laughs> and just the and last I will one. Share, I will share the videos with Lisa because I can't share them through my iPhone right now, and she can share them with you. Uh, does, does Alicia have the link by chance? Can she put them up? Alicia? No, because... I I created them on my own, so um, I'm going to uh, email okay. it to you right now. Yeah. Okay. Any questions that you have for us? Thank you. Uh, there is a question. Sarsh. What are your plans for continuing this project? Well, <clears throat> for the current project right now that just took place, we want the two homeschool teachers to continue. But for any other future journal swaps, uh, any requests that come in, uh, like I said, it's a great way to broaden one's horizon. Um, so uh, we'll take them on as, as any other exchange that we receive through Know My World and uh, tackle on different uh, other topics that are very, that we should touch upon, upon that are not really openly discussed in uh, public schools or private schools. So I think Know My World creates that gateway where we, uh, we want you to discuss, we want your, you to have those discussions. We want you to be open about it and have opinions about it, to learn about a different culture or religion or other people's opinions. So that's how we want to continue with these projects. Awesome. Thanks so much, Julia. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> Uh, Carol oh, popped out to her because she's Carol's running the next session. Right. This is Ness. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, thank you very much, um, Sharish and Lisa and Alicia. Um, it was a brilliant session, very inspirational. And I think we can all take a little bit of knowledge away from this into what we do. And I know not all of us are, are primary school teachers or elementary school teachers, but I know that we can all... Um, bring elements into this in, into what we do. So it was a, a really um, thought-provoking session and I really thank you for bringing that to us. So if there are no further questions, we might end the recording and then we can move on to the next session. Now the next session, oh, I haven't got a link for that, is about Toastmasters and for those of you who haven't heard of Toastmasters. They're a group of people who basically get together and talk and present on topics. Uh, thanks, Peggy. You're more organized than I am. I just grabbed it. So thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>